Good afternoon, Evergreen. I hope it finds everybody doing well. Today we're going to read chapter 13, Fang Spew and the Choir. This one, this chapter was written by my father, Ed York. Chapter 13, and then there's chapter 14, and that's the end of the book. So I hope you guys are enjoying it so far, but it's coming to a pretty quick end. I wish this virus would. Anyway, Fang Spew and the Choir. I know, you've heard the old saying about, I've got a frog in my throat. And it's supposed to explain why someone, human type, is talking funny since they have a sore throat. We persons of the frog, persons of the frog persuasion are not at all amused by the particular saying, mainly because we see it as a not-so-funny put-down about how frogs sound. How would you like it if we were frogs went around saying, Excuse me, I have a human in my throat. Let me tell you something. We frogs think the sound of frogs' choruses singing on a balmy Sunday night is really quite lovely, rather soothing, really. If you've ever taken the trouble to listen to, fro to when frogs are singing, there is the deep rumble of the bullfrog echoing through the wood and giving the foundational note to the frog music that is wonderful. The young frog, adult frog voice have a character all to their own. I understand that humans cannot appreciate the finer tonal differences between girl frogs and boy frogs, but believe me, we frogs hear and know the difference very well. Of course, at the top of the scale are the high voices humans often call, call peepers. It is their chirping and singing that perhaps carries the furthest on the night air. And when you hear it and follow it to its source, that's when you're treated to the full orchestra of frog music. Of course, due to safety concerns, if the singing frog singing frogs hear you coming, they will usually all fall silent until they realize that you mean them no harm. My name is Fang Spew. You probably already know that already since I told you about it my first adventure, in my first adventure story. Let me simply say the name, as names go, it serves its purpose quite well. If anyone calls for Fang Spew, I generally am pretty certain that they're looking for me and no one else. You let me know if you hear anyone else using my name, or I suppose it could happen, if it just so happened that it occurred to occur that I've been given someone else's name. Sure, with a name like mine, it probably takes a whole lot. Anyway... I have been always been on the outer edge of the frog music world, often having a whole lot of other things going on at the same time as choir rehearsal. But this had been a quiet month so far, and I just happened to notice one evening the, the ethereal nature of that night's music. Timos, I said, can you hear this? Okay, maybe not a lot of frogs have a gecko for a friend, but you must realize that any frog named Painsview is not your ordinary run-of-the-mill frog. I watched as Timos turned his head from side to side. Hear what? He said, I asked. I can't hear anything because the noisy frogs are all making. Right then I suddenly realized that perhaps Timos might not be the best person to ask. That's what I'm talking about, I persist persisted. If you listen carefully, there is a rhythm, a cadence, a, a, a melody to what the frogs are doing. It's very much a lovely song. I had a fast lesson in just how smart Timos was. He looked at me for a moment without saying a word. I realized that as far as I knew, geckos didn't make music, and, if I recall, they don't do much of anything in the noise-making world. Hmm, he said. Perhaps I need to listen a while. Maybe it's an acquired taste that develops over time. <laughs> Did I mention that Timos is one of my best friends? This gives you a hint of why that's so. I spoke half to myself. Maybe I need to try out singing. You know, it gives the person something to do when they are peaceful, something to do when things are peaceful and quiet. Timos grinned. We've had a lot of peace and quiet around here lately. But, he relented, you can sure give it a try. Who knows? You might be the greatest singer in, freedom, in frogdom. As if you could tell was the best I could do. And so I hopped over to where all the, the deep chicho roots were coming from. Lovely sound. Excuse me, I said to one of the distinguished looking older frogs seated in the group of other frogs. He didn't look too happy because I happened to be to interrupt him in the middle of a particularly resonant trog. He looked down at me, he was, he was a very large frog, and said in a voice dripping with patience, Yes, little fellow, how can I help you? Well, I hesitated since it did sound a little presumptuous. I just want to know how I can learn to sing as well as you do. I figured a little flattery wouldn't hurt anything. He looked at the large frog sitting next to him and chuckled. He poked him and the side of his elbow and said, Did you hear that? He wants to know how to sing as well as I do. The other frog chuckled back. Better let, let tell him to never close both eyes at once, learn how to run and dodge at the same time, and knowing you from there on out is just dumb luck. Son, he said, looking at me, 
When you were born, how many brothers and sisters did you have? I didn't have any idea what this had to do with singing, but I figured that if I ever wanted to find out, I'd better answer. Oh, I don't know exactly. Perhaps a hundred or so. Right. And how many other cousins would you guess you have all living here in Black Pond? I really don't have any idea. A lot, I would imagine. That's right, he said. And you can hear a whole lot of them singing right now. He paused a moment, and as I listened, I realized there was no way I could count all the voices singing all around the pool. He continued for a moment. The most of what you hear, as you know, we call peepers, because they make that high peeping noise that carries the furthest. The next door voice are croakers. Both your mom and dad were in that group. That's how they met. You knew my mom and dad? I asked, surprised. Sure do. If I'm not mistaken, you're the one they call Fangspew. You had something to do with the Bugsilius critter a while back, if I recall correctly. I had help. Team Awesome Legs, I added, just to make sure they both got some credit for the adventure that had almost had a tragic ending. Almost, I say, because I would have been the one and the one ended. The old frog nodded. Well, my buddy here is right. To become a singer like we are, the primary thing, to, thing is to live long enough to get big and, he paused, hunting for that word, dignified like we are. His buddy interrupted. He really means fat, they both laughed. Old Frog continued, Keep out of trouble, watch out for big birds and snapping turtles, and just keep away from danger. If you're lucky, you'll live long enough to see your grandkids and your great-grandkids, and one day you get to sing in our grand nightly choir. Until then, practice, practice, practice. You just start out with the peepers, and then work your way up to the croakers. I had to know. After the peepers and the croakers, what do you call the group you're in? Oh, he glanced at his buddy who was smiling. We're called bullfrogs, his buddy chimed in. Actually, old goats would be more like it. Everyone knows goats can't sing. They can't so, old frog said. They just, it's just that they are really blah, blah, bad. He and his buddy both laughed. I think this must have been an old joke with him. He continued without my saying anything. Of course, the idea of practicing is really important. He lowered his voice and leaned toward me. Do you see the bullfrogs with freckles about three or four places over that way? He emphasized the direction he meant by nodding his head out toward a small group of singers off to one side. Old Freckleface never practiced when he was growing up, and he really sings off key. It's hard to sing when he's in the group. He pulls everyone else off key. Oh, can't you do anything about it, like, like tell him or something? Nope, he shook his head. The only thing we can do is drown him out by singing loudly. He sighed deeply. You need to realize that there is a whole lot of ego tied up in doing something publicly, like singing, and it would really hurt his feelings if we asked him not to sing. You can tell that he enjoys it tremendously. Just imagine how he would feel if a bunch of us told him that he really hit bad at something he likes to do so much. I looked down at my feet. You mean that this singing is not something that just comes naturally? Nope, he said. Otherwise, everyone would be out singing, and who would be left in the audience? Just then, the choir started tuning up for another song. I saw him looking over toward the others, trying not to appear too anxious to get back to the chug rah, rah, ring. We better go, I said hurriedly, not wanting to interrupt. Thank you so much for your help. He nodded, turned ponderously, and rejoined his singing group. Timos caught up with me as I slowly hopped away, still enjoying the evening concert. I bet I know what you're thinking, Timos said, looking sideways at me as we moved along. I don't know, well, can you know what I'm thinking, I asked, not wanting to appear too transparent. You're wondering how to solve the problem of the frog who sings off key, admit it. I took a couple of hops, grumbling at myself for being so easy to see through. All right, I finally admitted. I was trying to think of a way to get him from messing, get him from messing up everyone else without hurting his feelings. Just getting everyone to know their own parts well and then singing loud sounds good. But suppose he gets, he thinks he knows his part well and then sings off key really loud like everyone else is singing loud. Too much shook his head. Do, do you have any bright ideas? I don't guess earplugs would work. They make they would make a funny looking choir if everyone had wore earplugs that were near him. And earplugs for him wouldn't do any good, T Moss added. I laughed. How about earplugs for the audience? No, T Moss missed the fact that I was kidding. That would defeat the whole purpose of having a choir sing. He stopped. I looked around grinning. Oh, was that supposed to be funny? he asked. I just grinned wider. Okay, funny guy, he started walking again. What big fat idea do you have wanting around that empty space you call a brain? How about getting someone to make up a narrative part for the music, where instead of a solo singing act, there's a part where in each song where someone is supposed to speak, like telling a story that explains something the song in the song. 
if we could give him something like that that wouldn't hurt his feelings and he'd be an important part of the singing group. Huh. That might be that might work work as long as he reads fairly well. But who's gonna write that part of the speaking part? I thought for a moment. There's gotta be a choir leader around somewhere. We might offer this idea as a suggestion for their next performance. And maybe the leader would want someone who can do the writing. Timos and I tried to figure out where we might find the leader, but we're having no success until Timos had one of his rare, brilliant thoughts. Suppose we were to ask some of their choir members. Being as smart as I am, I knew it was a good idea when I heard one. Okay, I said, let's do that. And so we did. A friendly frog pointed us out to, to a tall frog standing on a little hummock near the edge of Black Pond and suggested we talk to her. At the next lull in the music, I hopped over to where she stood and introduced myself. Hi, I said, my name is Fang Spew, and I'd like to talk to you about two things. She smiled at me, not at all bothered by my interruption. Sure, I'm Charlie, and yes, I know it's a boy's name. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. What are the two things you want to talk about? First of all, I'd like to join the choir, but we can talk about that later. The big thing is I believe you already know there's a problem among the bullfrogs, since there seems to be one who seems off-key and doesn't know it. Charlie frowned slightly. Yes, I know who you're talking about, and it's a tough problem to deal with. I don't want to tell him he can't be part of the group, but some of our bullfrog singers are dropping out because he keeps pulling them off key. I'm not sure how to deal with this. Well, I've thought of a solution that might help, but perhaps you've already thought of it. I added the last, hoping to convince her that I wasn't some just kind of know-it-all kid with a lot of ego and no sense. Of course, I could be wrong. She pursued her lips, wondering what kind of idea this new frog, just out of the peeper age, might have. Go ahead, she said. I'd like to hear your idea. I spelled out my idea of getting the problem frog into the reading role, helping him to maintain his self-esteem while easing him out of the singing role into that of one of speaking. As I spoke, I could see her relax a bit and even nod once in a while. Not a bad idea, she said, but you've hit on the problem of finding someone to write out what we want him to say. Everyone has their own cadence of speaking, and it would need to be someone familiar with how she spoke. Wait a minute, I got an idea. She was silent for a brief moment and smiled. Suppose I ask him to do his own writing. He knows how fast he speaks, and this would give him a lot of input into what he gets to say. She paused for another moment. I suppose it would be a good idea for me to tell him how long he gets to speak. Timos and I hurried off, knowing the director had more directing to do. I was quite happy at how well our idea had been received and wanted to see how it went, into, went once it was put into effect. The next evening was a lovely evening. The full moon shimmered in a shining pathway across Black Pond as Timos and I went back to where the choir was tuning up in preparation for the evening concert. I didn't know where I, I was supposed to be, so I was really looking forward to the director to guide me to the right place. I could hear various voices chirping here and there in the dark, with an occasional shrug from over where the bullfrogs were gathered near the water. Honestly, I was almost afraid to go back there in the event that old Freckleface might have heard about my part in the effort to move him toward a speaking part. If he liked the idea, that was fine, but there was certainly the chance that he would not like it at all. Before we found the director, though, we heard her rapping sharply on the rock with a baton, causing all the warm-up notes and general chattering among the choir members to fall silent. Attention, ladies and gentlemen, if anyone else out there who doesn't fall, sorry, and anyone else out there who doesn't fall into the category, I have an announcement to make. We're going to make a real addition to our evening concert starting tonight. Our beloved friend, Freckleface, has graciously volunteered to act as our master of ceremonies during the concert and will be reading an introduction to each of our numbers, one that he has written himself. We are all familiar with his ability to public speak, and for the sake of preserving the quality of his presentation prior to each song, he has decided to forego singing for the rest of his, to rest his speaking voice. I want each of us to personally express to Freckleface our profound appreciation for his work in bringing this new and helpful feature to our concerts. She concluded her announcements by saying, and now, for the first time at Black Pond, let me present our friend Freckleface in, in his premier speaking role as we prepare to sing our first number. A swelling round of applause was heard from the audience as well as from the choir. Bullfrog's section seemed to clap the loudest, but certainly that must have been because Freckleface was one of their own. Timos and I clapped, sharing a secret smile between us as one of the choir members directed us over toward the younger section of croakers. I was so pleased. The choir seemed to sing a whole lot better that evening, aided in no small part by the spoken introduction Freckleface made between songs. I even caught Timos tapping his foot with several of the numbers. Yep, it is an acquired taste. The end.